how the center is. I was a bit confused about concurrentism. It yeah. seems to me it's primarily designed to explain particular effects as yeah. are resulting from two the contribution of two different elements, right? We or particular things provide the particular input conditions, yeah. and God provides the sort of the standing conditions, the laws. Right? Yeah. Well, and so that something strange to me. So again, because that's there apparently primarily to explain the particular effects, but yeah. what you wanted to explain was the laws. Yeah. Right? Right. So in terms of the explanation of the laws, it seems concurrentism just doesn't focus on that. It just presupposes that the laws are provided by God. <coughs> so it's really a kind of, as far as the laws are concerned, it's really a kind of, maybe it could be voluntarism or whatever, right? Yeah. The laws are just whatever God wanted to. Yeah, I don't want to say that. Okay, uh, so, I, so look, I, I, I don't think the right way to characterize um, the role of creatures in God in the concurrence view is one in which creatures do, provide the, the specific stuff and God provides the laws, right? The idea is that, we, so let, again, so let's think both about the way that God plays a role in the explanation of the laws, on laws of nature on the concurrence view, and about how God plays a role in the specific transactions that occur within the moral order, right? And, and so this could be an obvious relation between them, but let's start with, with the transactions, right? So if you talk about the transaction of, um, of um, fire burning cotton or, or you know, water dissolving salt or whatever, right? The idea is not just that God provides a law and the, and the creatures just provide their specific natures. The idea is that um, in any, right, in any causal transaction, right, where there's, a, where, there's, where there's a causal power sort of you know, activated and it brings about some effect, that you know, the effect brought about is the, result, is the result of joint causation, right? It's jointly caused by God and the creature, okay? How is it jointly caused by God and the creature? God contributes something, the creature contributes something. With the creature, if you say, the idea would be, think about it in terms of like contrastive explanation, you know, why did the, why did the cotton burn, right? Why did the fire burn the cotton? Well, because of God and because of the fire. Of course, the kind of thing the cotton is. But if you, Well, in what sense was it God? Well, if God hadn't concurred, right, if God hadn't contributed the sort of general, you know, efficient causation, right, the, the, the burning wouldn't have happened, right? That's part of the, and that's, again, that's part of the background. That's general part of the background. It, on the other side, you say, well, if, it, if this hadn't been fire, if it had been something else, right, then it wouldn't have been a burning. It would have been a freezing or, a, or whatever, or a chilling or whatever, right? Um, now... You say, well, okay, so as we move from the level of some specific transaction in nature to, to, um, to the laws of nature. So suppose you understand, so how, suppose we take on a theory of laws of nature, okay? So as you say, okay, um, what, what's involved in, in laws of nature um, is, you know, uh, sort of this sort of Armstrong, Dretzky, Thule view. So, so, what, so what laws of nature are, are relationships of necessitation between properties, right? So you say, well, what's the relation? So, so the idea is that this, this you know, for, 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 for a law of nature is basically something like this. Um, being cotton, you know, being um, placed in flame necessitates being burned, okay? Um, God's role in this is going to be, because I, well, well, I said, you're going to have to make some distinctions here. Is it a law of nature in the sense that the law of nature entails, right, that whenever something's, whenever cotton is placed in fire, it's going to burn? Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't entail it. It doesn't necessitate in that sense. It necessitates it only given God's ordinary, right, God's ordinary concurrence. It's sort of part of the background, right, of sort of ordinary, effect, sort of or, the ordinary course of nature, right, that God concurs, right? God contributes the sort of, the, the, you know, the general power um, of bringing about, of bringing about causes. What the fire, what the fire gives us just, what, oh, sorry, go ahead. The law is still all due to God. We don't have any hand in that, right? So the laws just come from God. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Right? Stuff that's about particulars because you're yeah not, yeah I think, I think that's right so, so about the laws that's what you wanted to explain. yeah so so right and that, and that is all about I mean so so um so the holding of the laws right is due to right is is, is all divine action right it's all, all due to God's you know God's contribution to the ordinary cause of nature and the God's you know, whatever role you want to say is you know, Ron's question whatever role whatever role God has with respect to bringing about these natures um, then you know that's going to be it's going to be part of the story for example say the same thing about the laws of logic also. <laughs> I'm going to call behind this lectern now, uh, and I'm not going to say anything more till till, till uh, time's up. Um, no, I see. I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I, I said I, I don't know whether or not the laws. I'll ask. Who was it that asked me? That, why is someone asked me this like two weeks ago, and I was also embarrassed? Like, what are you people trying to do to me? Um, I don't know what to say about the laws of logic. I mean, I don't know. I don't know whether I want to say. Um, you know, I don't know if what we have in logic is is well. 
is necessitation in the same way that it is with, with physical laws. And things that there are necessary relationships, but I don't know, if don't know if there's necessitation. I think those are different things. And, and I don't know whether or, not, whether or not they require the same kind of explanation. You can do whatever you want. You're the director of the Center for Philosophy. So I want to ask questions, but I'll listen. You said you want God to be involved in everything that's explanation eligible. Yeah. You might say that all explanations would involve logic. Yeah. To some extent. So. I mean, I, I, I don't know if that will work. Maybe so. I said, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, um, I'm not sure I understand your normative concurrentism, Mark. Uh, I want to think more about that. But I want to ask you a question about your criticism of. Uh, Divine uh, voluntarism. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of inclined to think that it's in that neighborhood that the truth. It's right there. It's right there in the ink. <laughs> yes. And I, I, I thought about saying, and by the way, Al, here's the way the argument. No, no, no. That seems to me not to be true, on the, at least on some versions, or maybe the most usual versions of uh, voluntarism here. If it's an essential, if it's uh, if God is a necessary being and uh, has essentially the property of issuing certain commands, let's yeah. say truth-telling, in all possible worlds in which there are um, morally aware creatures, yeah. then it'll be a necessary truth that uh, one should tell the truth or that a given action of uh, truth-telling is right or obligatory. And if it's a necessary truth then uh, that it's obligatory, then uh, isn't that enough by way of necessitating our action, necessitating oh. the obligatoriness of our action or, yes. or making that obligatory, it's, it's, it's logically necessary to so, all possible worlds. So, um, so yes, and not a lot of it, but I still think it's objectionable. I mean, there may be, so here's, here's, here's uh, consider the following. Um, X morally necessitates irrespective of a divine command imposed on one. Okay? And that's what, and that's what moves God, necessitates God, but doesn't morally necessitate me. See, here, a little further down, you say, but on the voluntary, this is on page 13, by the way. On the voluntarist view, it's not true that abstracting from divine action, that would include divine commands, I guess, divine yeah. willings, right. it's not true that any created good and any perfection of created moral agency entails created moral agents acting in a certain way. Yeah. But if, as a matter of fact, uh, this divine action is necessary, um, you can't abstract from it. I mean, it's, a, it's something that I'm sure you learned in this metaphysics course 20 years ago, was that if uh, P and Q together entail R, and Q is necessary, then P entails R. But, but that's by itself, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is also familiar. No. So, um, so, so, look, so, so here's, so here's, here's one thing that, um, here's thing, one thing that, uh, that, um, a lot of respectable people believe, and, 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 and Mike's to my right, and he's going he's gonna to verbally assault me, uh, if not now, then later. So, so that, that there's at least sort of some sense that can be made um, about counterpossibles, right? About sort of asking whether or not um, we can ask whether something, what would be the case if, um, if something even that were necessary didn't hold, right? So I say, so abstracting from divine action, even necessary divine action. I mean, another way to put it, all right, so another way to put it would be, I mean, I might be able to make the same point better without incurring your wrath. Okay, so please let me try. Um, uh, if, you, if, if I try to do it in terms of explanation, right? So, um, or maybe that's what I was trying to trying to get at. So maybe I'm just being going in a big lazy circle here. But but look, so um, so here's the thing. It seems strange to me that um, that in order to explain why, right, I'm bound to act on this thing, right? You have to appeal. To God, some, some action of God's, right? But in order to explain why God has to do it, you don't appeal to anything like that. If you, even apart, you, 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 need a, you need a narrower set, a narrower explanation to explain why God's got to do it than to explain why I've got to do it. And that seems strange to me. I mean, it seems like I've got a kind of normative freedom that God doesn't have, right? And that's what, I said, that's what seems peculiar to me. That's my view. That's a way of restating without without doing the, the objectionable thing about entailment, right? Which I really want to avoid. Uh, so I want to go back to the very first question because as you were going through the talk, I was thinking versus which one was first? Quasi Cartesianism uh, way out of all this. We're going to come. Oh, about well, well, divine action generated. Yeah, you know, so you don't, don't go with this God's goodness stuff. Go with God's will. It's the thing that sort of fixes the nature and fixes maybe I don't know what it is. Maybe it fixes the nature. Maybe it fixes 
what the good is for a particular nature, it does some things. So it's yeah. that's some volitional activity. And in reply to that, he said, well, you know, uh, there's some problems with that view. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what I followed the problems. At least some of them seem like problems for everybody about moral hesitation. But, but even after that, I just want to see if I got this right. You're, you're, will, you're willing to concede at least this much. The problems you raised in the paper for theological voluntarism, uh, whatever, divine command theory, yeah. uh, that it entails uh, you know, contingency of the moral law, uh, and that it involves some because it takes away the moral hesitation pertaining between the natural uh, and another natural. Uh, neither of those apply here. Neither does this so, apply to... So this is kind of hybrid to the Cartesian theory, right? The sort of oh, problem. yeah, yeah, that was, I was pushing on that. I mean, okay, it, so, it, it, might, it might turn out that, that sort of structurally similar problems could be pressed, but I'm not, I wasn't pushing okay, on that. Okay, so I if, thought about it. if that's the case, then I, I don't know how to adjudicate this, but I want to help. So here's a question mark. Can you help me see why grounding this stuff in God's goodness is to be preferred to making the grounding move in God's will? Yeah. Uh, it was like essence because you might have thought that the intuition that we had about getting God in the explanatory story wasn't just to have some or other feature of God in the explanatory story, but we wanted a kind of not just an explanatory, but like a causal story. And when we want causal stories. We really want this was not my view at all. I don't think that's right at all. I mean, well, that's, so, but, that's the thing. I mean, it's, you were trying to make this reconciliation move, and I took the, the sort of the side that was going to be happily reconciled. We're voluntarists, and yeah. what you've given is not a happy voluntarist reconciliation. You've given a kind of you get some bit of God in there, but why is that all we want about it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 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 not that interested in making nice with the voluntarists. I mean, I, I I've got some you know a desire to. I mean, look, I mean. I've, I've spent much time thinking about volunteer, and the, sort of the one thing that I look at volunteerism and think, boy, they get this right, is the theocentrism of the view. Right? The fact is that every explanatory story has to involve God; that it's immediate; that that's you know, that God is no way put on the side or mediated, you know, immediate, nothing like that. That's at the very center. Whether or not the story is um, a causal story or whatever, it strikes me as sort of you know beside the. I shouldn't say beside the point, but when, well, if, the, if, I, if a voluntarist said, but you know, as you put it, you know, but wait, you haven't made this, the, God's causation, right? You know, if it, then I say, well, why are, do I want that? I mean, what exactly? Why, why is that the story you want to tell? And again, if you start saying, well, the causation is free, right? Then I'd start, you know, say, well, do we really want to say that it's free in the sense of continue? anyway? So you can see what that's. That's not what I'm. That's not what I'm going for, right? So, so here's the good. Here's stuff about good and, and divine ideas and so forth, right? Um, and this is this is this is worse worked out. But let me um, let me um, take a crack at it. So, I say, well, suppose we had some wonderful story of of the natural law that's done in terms of divine ideas, you know, sort of this quasi you know, activist activist story and all that. And, and this is enough to generate the goods for each thing and so forth. Um, so let me ask you if this moves you a little bit, right? Um, there's a sense in which a natural law of you like this generates divided loyalties, okay, between human goods and the divine goodness, right? So there's some things that even so, so even if it's true that there's never a case in which proper moral res, more, in which proper response to the humanly good in a way contradicts what's morally necessary for, well, necessary in terms of how you respond to God or anything. That's not the worry. I'm not worried about moral conflict in that sense. What I'm worried about is the sense that I could love, that there could be something that I could appropriately love that would not itself be, in a way, loving God, right? Now, if, you, if the idea is, right, but, but if you say that every human good, every last one, right, has its goodness in a way immediately from the divine goodness, right? Not in some story down the line or whatever. Um, immediately from the divine goodness, then you, in a way, I think you avoid, right? What I take to be kind of an objectionable feature: this idea that I could have divided, sort of divided love. Okay, that you know, when I love my children, or love my wife, or love my parents, that it's that it's in a way loving something that's different, right, from loving God, right? Even if it's justified, you know, God's okay with me loving them. You know, God doesn't mind. God's not jealous in that way. No. I, that sort of thing should be, you know, the, the, it shouldn't be divided in, in that way either, I want to say, right? Um, and even if that's not, even if you want to say, well, there are ways of capturing, right, those kinds of intuitions that are not this story, I think I do want to say that that kind of um, considered judgment is strong enough, right, or has, has enough sort of force to it that, that this story accommodates it, right, um, is a good feature, is a good making feature of the view. Okay, thank you.